Hello and welcome back. Now let's see our last part of arithmetic progression. It is going to be called interpolation. Well, we can also call arithmetic interpolation or just linear interpolation. Because when you are discussing about arithmetic progression, we have discussed that it is linear. Okay, if you just if you just remember and if you just plot it, your terms are always going to fall inside a line. Okay, so this would be your first term, maybe. It, can, it could be this, the first term, okay, negative, it doesn't matter. But they are also going to fall, they are, they are always going to form a straight line. Now, what is this interpolation? Well, actually, interpolation, it is, for instance, when we have this. Let's suppose we have one number, I'm going to make a line here, another number. So in here you have a known number. Let's just put in here. So let's say we have a number A and an, another number B. They are known, okay? We know them. They are known numbers. And let's suppose that we decide to put three terms in between. Okay? We just we have just decided that. Well, Let's just put those terms in here. One, two, three. And those new terms are going to be called C, D, E. And of course, because we're discussing about an AP, an arithmetic progression, it must be linear. So the distance between each one must be always be the same, which are calling the common difference. Okay. So remember that those numbers in here are the ones we are inserting, okay? Those who are not there. We just have A and B. And now let's say, okay, between A and B, I want to insert three new numbers, okay? So those are going to be the new numbers inserted in our sequence. And the word sequence is very important because they are going to form a sequence. Okay, this is going to be in a such a way that we are going to have a sequence. Okay, so our sequence is now going to be A, C, D, E, B. Okay, and that is going to be an arithmetic. progression and the common difference is going to be D in this case so how to insert three terms knowing for instance let's suppose that this would be two let's suppose that this could be a two let's make it in here imagine now we have the same line here this is going to be a practical example now, we have a 2 and we have a 10. We have those two numbers. And I need to insert three more terms in between. Well, so I'm going to insert in here three more terms. And they got to be equally spaced. Because if they are not, they are not going to form an, arith an arithmetic progression. Well. If we just we, we are going to calculate that, but just to give you like uh, uh, a sense of what it's going to be, well, it is just like these were to be four, six, and eight. We can see that this is a two, 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 two. Okay, so our sequence in this case would be what two. 4, 6, 8, 10. You see? And those numbers in here, those numbers in here were interpolated. Okay? We just used an interpolation to insert. Okay? They were not there. They were inserted. 
and this is very interesting in many parts of our daily lives. Well, it's we're going to, of course, we're going to use formulas, but just to let you know, if you wanted to insert three, and this is very important, we have to think about these. Okay, it's very important. This where is my blue pen? It should be around somewhere. Haha, <laughs> I found it. Now, to make this exercise in here, well, we're going to insert. three terms but if we're going to have three terms okay we're going to have four intervals okay for three for three terms we're going to have four intervals and that is what is very important okay to discuss the number of intervals it is the number of terms being inserted plus one. If we wanted to insert five terms, we are going to have six intervals. Make it very simple. In here, let's make a new one. Imagine we have this line. We have A, B. We are going to insert just two numbers, okay? Let's put one number. Let's let's start with real simple. One number. If we just insert one number, what does that mean? It means that we are just inserting two intervals. Okay? So one number, two intervals. Now, let's make this is going to be it is not supposed to be difficult, but it is supposed to be very well known, okay? We cannot have doubts on that. Now let's insert two terms. Let's put this easier to write. Two terms. So it's going to be like one and two, right? When you do this, you are going to have three intervals. Okay? Well, okay, let's suppose you're just going to put five terms now. A, B. Let's insert five terms. If we just insert five terms, let's put them, okay? It gotta be five, okay? So one, two, three, four, five. Well, if we just in fi insert five terms, look, one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to have six intervals. What do I mean with all that? I mean that, and this is very important, okay? Let me try to use even that pen in here. So, the number, the number of terms, okay? It's going to be in here. And this is very important, okay? The number of terms, it is going to be the number of intervals minus one, okay? And this is what we have to, to remember. One term, two intervals. Two terms, three intervals. So the number of terms is always going to be the number of intervals minus one, or on the other way, the number of intervals, it is going to be always one higher than the number of terms. Why is this important? If we just return to our theory here, well, we're going to insert three numbers, right? Just three. If we're just going to insert three numbers, it means that we're going to have four intervals. Four intervals between two and 10. Between two and 10, we have a difference of eight. A difference of eight with four intervals, meaning each interval is going to be two. Agree? So that's why you have to know. So I would just like to close our introduction here, just stating that if we interpolate P terms, we are going to have plus plus one intervals, okay? Just keep that in mind. This is very important.